Hey guys, in today's lecture, we'll be discussing the poem Agony by Anil Garai. Now, Anil Garai is a prominent Dalit writer in India. He is an established voice in Dalit literature and a staunch or a strong supporter of Dalit causes. In Garai's works, we can find the anger and the angst of the marginalized and the downtrodden people who occupy the margins of the society. people who are crushed by the upper classes we can find the anger of those people in his poems initially he started his literary career through novels he wrote novels first and then he turned to poetry because he believed that only poetry can infuse the sufferings of the dalits only poetry can truly express the sufferings of the dalits his subjects are mostly old men and women belonging to the dalit community he is not an idealist in his sensibilities he does not harbor any romantic notions or sensibilities he does not believe that he could just one they wipe away the inequalities existing in the society instead he showcases a sharpened dalit consciousness in his works his first volume of poetry is batasar swarlipi which was translated into english as wind notes he is a recipient of agash sahitya puraskar and kapi nityananda puraskar kami kapi pramod pasu smriti sahitya puraskar this particular poem agony was originally written in bengali and it was originally titled agun bhuri it was later on translated by a person named indranil acharya the poem tells the tale of an old dalit woman who lives all alone she is striving for her basic amenities such as food water and shelter the woman has become a an image of deprivation her bpl card is blurred it indicates that her existence in this entire universe is in one way or the other blurred the dalit woman is a symbol of the deprivation faced by dalit community for people like her the tricolor of our national flag stings like a venomous asp or a venomous snake because the tricolor offers no salvation for them they are stuck in a quagmire of racial bigotry and caste supremacy they can't escape from the caste class prejudices that escape that uh, is there in the society they can't even claim an identity as their own because even their identity is erased their existence is erased from all governmental records just like the woman's name is erased or blurred from the ration card now without further ado let's begin today's lecture that's a tale told with difficulty to whom do they belong forest land or earth on a wrinkled face and a famished body the tricolor stings like a venomous asp 
I need food. I need water. I need shelter amongst my people. The old woman crouches slowly to the closed ration shop with her stick. One moment of pause, she gasps for breath in sweltering heat, her BPL card blurred by sweat. She is a sketch in black and white of a poor forlorn soul, trudging an aimless path with moistened eyes. The arid land around her promises ruin. Air is sick and the early evening moon, a beguiling dream of forbidden pleasures of yesteryears now returns to sing. Time ticks by and the old soul forlorn fights with needs of rice, of hearth, of clothing, of festive frivolities in holy, mad splash of colours. Between the dream and the reality falls the shadow of pestilence, of a gradual decay in ramshackle frame, disease, deadly as wood aunt's gall, burns the body, the mind, the soul, burning, 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 the decayed house of a deprived nation, forever doomed, like ancient woman struggling to survive. Here the woman is a symbol of the deprived nation. That is a tale told with difficulty. To whom do they belong? Forest, land or hearth? So that is the question. The poem begins with a rhetorical question. That is the tale told with difficulty. This is a tale. The, the tale that he recounts. It is a tale that is told with difficulty. To whom do they belong? Do they belong to the forest? Do they belong to the lands or to the hearths? Hearths here stands for homes. Where do they belong? Where do these marginalized people of India belong? On a wrinkled face and a famished body, the tricolor stings like a venomous asp. So the old woman with her wrinkled face and famished body is presented. The old woman is poverty stricken. That is why she is famished. And the tricolor stings her. It paints her like a venomous asp, like a venomous snake. The tricolor stings her, poisons her. I need food. I need water. I need shelter amongst my people. These lines are written in quotations, which means that these lines are uttered by the old woman. She asks for basic necessities. I need food. I need water. I need shelter amongst my people. She wishes to live among her people. She needs a shelter, but that too among her people. She does not want to be separated from her people. Usually when governmental agencies come up with rehabilitation programs for the downtrodden, they uproot the downtrodden from their own homes and place them in alternate houses. The old woman does not want to live in one of those alternate houses. She just wished to live with her own people. So she says, I need food. I need water. I need shelter amongst my people. My people here may stand for her family. It might also stand for the society, the Dalit society, the Dalit men and women. The old woman crouches slowly. The old, old woman crouches slowly. What do you mean by crouch? Malayalathra namla kuninjiri kyaanu varayile. Kuninjaanu varayile. To bend one's shoulder towards the knees. So, the old woman crouches slowly to the closed ration shop with her stick. So, she is approaching slowly the ration shop. She is crouching. She is in a bent position with a stick she approaches the ration shop with a walking stick she approaches the ration shop one moment of pause she gasps for breath in sweltering heat so she is approaching the ration shop in a hot summer day she can feel the sweltering heat she can feel heat in her body her BPL card blurred by the sweat. So it's a hot summer day. So a BPL card is blurred. What do you mean by blurred? 
the writings in the BPL card is no longer visible. It is blurred. Her BPL card blurred by sweat. So the BPL card is now blurred. The writings are no longer visible. She is a sketch in black and white of a poor forlorn soul. So if you take her, she appears to be a sketch made in black and white. She appears to be just a sketch, a one-dimensional image made in black and white because her life does not have color. She lives in, she lives a very monotonous life. That monotony is being reflected by the colors black and white. So she appears as though she is a sketch drawn in black and white. The sketch of a forlorn, poor soul. The sketch of a poor, forlorn soul. The sketch of a poor woman. A woman who lives all alone by herself. Trudging an aimless path with moistened eyes. So she moves through the aimless path. Path and her eyes are moistened, her eyes are filled with tears. It's a very powerful visual image. The arid land around her promises ruin. So all around her there is land, but the land is dry. The dry land around her promises nothing but ruin, promises destruction and disaster. The Arid land, the dry land promises only the end. Air is sick and the evening moon a beguiling dream of forbidden pleasures. So the air around her is sick. It appears as though the air around her is sick. And you can see the early evening moon. The evening moon has appeared on the sky. The early evening moon has appeared on the sky. And the early evening moon charms her dreams. So now she dreams of the forbidden pleasure that she once enjoyed in the Esther years when she was a young woman. When the moon arrived in the evenings, she enjoyed forbidden pleasures. But now all those pleasures return back to sting her because now there is no one to comfort her. Time ticks by and the old soul forlorn fights with need. So time ticks by, time passes on and the old woman is now all alone. Maybe she loved someone and then he abandoned her because now she is all alone. So she thinks about a forbidden pleasure that she enjoyed when she sees the moon. Then those memories stings her, which means that all those memories of the forbidden pleasure that she enjoyed, all those memories stings her or hurts her. So she might have had a good time with someone, but now all those memories return to hurt her. Maybe she had an unrequited love. Time ticks by. Time passes on, the old soul forlorn, the old soul, the old woman is all alone, fights with needs. So she is fighting for her basic needs of rice, of hearth and of clothing. She fights for her basic needs to get something to eat, to have a roof over her head and she fights to have some clothing, to clothe herself, to cover her modesty. Of festive frivolities in holy, mad splash of colors. So she also wants to take part in all those festivities like that of holy. She also wishes to get that mad splash of colors. She also wishes to enjoy at the time of holy. Between the dream and reality falls the shadow of pestilence. But these are all her dreams. She dreams of a tomorrow in which she will have a place to live. She will have something to eat. She will have clothes to cover her modesty. She dreams of a tomorrow in which she will be able to enjoy 
the festival of Holi. And Holi is a festival of colors. And remember, the woman is living a very monotonous life. Even when the poet drew her sketch, it was in black and white. The woman yearns for some color in her life. But between the dream and the reality, between the dream that she harbors to live a fulfilling life and the reality that she is faced with falls the shadow of pestilence. But in the reality that she faces, there is the shadow of pestilence all over. Power the reality la ipola the pestilence in the shadow and a pestilence in the chin and the palatarathilla diseases in the palatarathilla asugangal the shadow and in our the reality la folly the rikinada. She yearned or she wished to become someone else. She wished to add color to her life. But her reality is entirely different. Her reality still falls in the shadow of pestilence or diseases. Of gradual decay in a ramshackle frame, disease deadly as wood and skull burns. So you can see a gradual decay in her ramshackle frame. Her frame, her entire body is slowly decaying. Her ramshackle means to be in a state of despair. So her body frame which is in a state of despair, her body frame which is in a state of decay burns through. So she feels the burning in her body. She feels the burning of her mind and soul. Burning, burning, burning. The dead house of a deprived nation. Sorry, the decayed house of a deprived nation. Forever doomed like ancient women struggling to survive. So here, uh, the body of the woman is compared to the decayed house of a deprived nation. Just like her decaying body, the nation too is slowly decaying. The nation too is falling into deprivation. And the nation too is doomed like the ancient woman. Our nation too is struggling to survive. Our nation too is still under the clutches of casteism and all sorts of discriminations and prejudices which in a way decays the soul of the nation. All forms of prejudices destroy the soul of the nation. So our Nation is just like the old woman. Just like the old woman, our nation too has decayed because of its firm belief in casteism and racial bigotry. Our nation too is decayed. The nation too is like the ancient women, forever doomed, struggling to survive. Just like the old woman, trying hard to survive in a hostile world, our nation too is trying hard to survive in today's world. For a nation like India, which still holds on to all kinds of discriminations, it's very difficult to survive. In this modern world. We can read it that way. Or it can also mean that our nation too in a, is in a state of decay. Just like the old women. Now the old woman is afflicted with 
many diseases with pestilences and just like the old woman our nation too suffers from diseases diseases like racial bigotry caste supremacy and upper class prejudices so this poem is a reminder it reminds us about the bad treatment that are meted out to the dalits and it also reminds us that if we go on in this decayed state where we fail to understand the needs of other then our nation too will plunge into a state of decay and we too will in the end find it difficult to survive i hope that the explanation was clear I shall be sharing some notes with you. Thank you for listening to today's lecture. Take care.